hype minced no words when it told us it wants to beat Corsair as the number one case on Amazon. Big claims for height, and we're going to be talking about the company's design philosophy and some of its new cases coming out today. We visited Height's design and R&D office in Taiwan, where we saw rapid prototyping labs with 3D printed fan and radiator components, a small but impactful thermal testing facility for measuring thermal resistance of coolers as they iterate in an attempt to make the world's best liquid cooler. And we also saw whatever the hell this terrifying thing is that's looping my face for some reason. Interestingly, this office actually used to be a much smaller, scrappier NZXT office in Taiwan before NZXT outgrew the space, which is a fitting backdrop for Height, considering its lead designer is a former NZXT employee who helped to revolutionize the company with H440 and S340 cases. For how small Height is, with a team of around 30 people in total, they've begun early investments in serious R&D and testing equipment and office upfits to enable a team of engineers and designers. Height wants to break through with new experimental ideas, not the tried and true designs. And so far, it's doing surprisingly well. Corsair currently holds the number one and number two spots for best-selling PC cases on Amazon, with Height's Y60 in and out of third rank. For a brand new company to case manufacturing, this is mostly unheard of. It's not common that you see a case that is much more than a rebrand come out of a new company, and certainly not something that lands in third place for best-selling behind Corsair and ahead of Fractal, Lian Li, NZXT, and everyone else you can think of. So that's an impressive feat, and that's also why we think Height is a company that's worth paying attention to as its storyline unfolds. We got the world first look at the new Height Y series case, its new follow up, and we also learned that Height is gunning for liquid cooler manufacturers with its new ultra thick radiator. The radiator is purpose built for the Y uh, new case and the Y60 cases. We also got to speak with the engineers and designers, but there's a lot of big talk from Height in this profile of its team and of its approach. So let's look at some of its new products and see if Height has something that can actually deliver. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Lian Li Lancool 216. The Lancool 216 is a high quality mid-range case with uniquely shaped and molded front intake fans that maintain an effective high flow cooling solution while keeping the case in the mid tower form factor. The case also has a movable motherboard tray to maximize installation and build options, and it has heavy ventilation that allows good cooling performance evenly throughout the case. Learn more at the link in the description below. This is an interesting video because it's kind of just a news video of new products, except it's mixed with a profile on an up and coming company. We've been trying to do more profiles. You saw one on Kingpin recently when we did the lab tour, trying to give some more behind the scenes of who actually is it in the industry designing or responsible for designing the most popular products. And uh, it's kind of a fun path to go. It, it meshes well with our journalism beat that we've been on for years now. And uh, we're excited to explore this avenue. So for this one, we did visit the offices when we were out in Taiwan. We were out there to visit factories from other companies. We stopped by Height when we were out there. And the company showed us a number of in-progress prototypes for its new products. It talked with us about its design ethos. And it also uh, is working on a set of cooling products that we find interesting. Now, we'll be reviewing these, obviously, in full as soon as we're able to. They're not here yet. But for now, we can at least report on what Height is planning to do with those rapidly made prototypes. Okay, so the new case makes some significant changes over the Y60 while following a similar exterior trend. The case should end up around or under $150, $160, but that's not finalized yet. It should launch in a couple weeks at CES 2023. And the new liquid cooler, meanwhile, is ultra fat, latching on to what has made Arctic so successful. Height is trying to leverage the extra internal area of its cases to match with what it says will be the best AIO liquid cooler on the market. And we look forward to testing that claim because it's a pretty big one and it's pretty easy to validate. It also had a table full of 3D printed mice, a new keyboard that we won't cover today, and an RGB mouse mat that's aiming to compete in a market that's doing serious numbers for Razer. The first company that Height's trying to fight is Corsair. Height is owned by iBuyPower. If you didn't know that, we talked about it when they launched their first products. Uh, but its team largely operates independently of iBuyPower, and that's good. 
because it's isolated from iBuyPower's atrocious reputation that it has absolutely earned by building some of the worst pre-builds we've ever seen. So the company that makes this technically being owned by the company that makes the self-incinerating trash we've reviewed, uh, it's kind of impressive that, that they're so different. But that's a good thing. It's also good for iBuyPower because it's possible that there's some bleed over of design and talent staff there between the, the technically companies uh, that could benefit both of them. Now, the new case has a name. It's a Y-series case. We're not allowed to say what the name is, uh, but the case is going to be in the Y-series family. This is the Y60. The new one probably, you know, a lot of companies these days, they like to market on dimensions. They talk about three dimensions. They talk about five-dimensional armrests. So we need a name to refer to the new case just to make it easier to talk about. And the name we're going to use is Y4D. It's four dimensions. So it's the, the Y4D. So for the Y40, as we talk, we can't say what the name is. So that one, that's the name I've created just now. It's four and then the, the letter D, not to be confused with four zero, just to be clear. So. The Y40, uh, oh, also we can't show all the panels removed yet, but we can show this one. Uh, also, we were allowed to illuminate the inside of the case and film it from the outside. Look, the, the rules don't make sense to us either, but we're trying our best here. Anyway, uh, the new height case has done away with the trademark angular front corner, instead moving towards the more O11 style square edge. Now, as part of our hard hitting series of journalistic questions, we asked, why? Why is it no longer angular? And uh, the actual answer, quote, was angles are expensive. First, we had money inflation. Then AMD brought us X inflation, or Xflation as it's known. And now we have angle inflation. It's just getting out of control. But in reality, angles like this, they, actually they are expensive on a case. Uh, it increases the unusable volume of the case. So you've still increased the effective volume. This space is still functionally useless outside of the case and uh, obviously inside, but it hasn't really provided much other than looks. It also increases the price because adding an extra panel is an extra cost. It's assembly and it's manufacturing uh, and it's materials. So that, that makes sense at that point. And the Y4D is trying to reduce the price point of the Y60 anyway. All right, so the case has shifted focus largely to aesthetics while maintaining functionality. On the functional side, they now have an extra slot of depth for GPU spacing away from the glass panel. That'll help with thermals on the 40 series cards, although bottom intake was able to cope in the Y60. The case is still designed for water cooling like the Y60 is, but if you go with an air-cooled card, the extra slot spacing will definitely help with 40 series large GPUs. They're also planning to include two 120 mil FDB fans, one of which will be in the floor of the case underneath the power splice route. There isn't enough porosity here to fully leverage the power of a fan in the floor, but there are some large holes near the floor of the GPU that can feed it a little bit of air. We think they can improve on this area though, but we'll look at that once we review it. The back of the case will have a pre-installed one by 120 millimeter FDB fan, and the top supports three 120s, none are included, while the side intake supports up to two 140 fan. Maximum radiator support is one 360 on the top and then one 280 on the side. Aesthetically, Height has styled the inside of the right side panel with plastics that have a molded H Height logo surrounded by spiraling lines. These lines ultimately form the side intake ventilation, and we were allowed to show this particular panel. The top panel follows Y60 styling with converging ventilation at the front corner. Height should cut down on the plastics here to maximize the airflow, really, but it's water cooling focused, so they can kind of get away with some inefficiency that'll be covered up by brute force later. On the underside, the new case uses two large dust filters with attention to detail on the style once again. They're opposing designs here, again using a general theme of angles and convergence of lines to try and visually stand out, even if it's on the bottom of the case. So there's a lot of focus here on the aesthetics, and you all know we mostly focus on performance in our reviews. Uh, I've known Rob Teller, the lead designer here, for a very long time. We started in the industry roughly around the same time. And uh, so he knew exactly what I was going to say when I asked, so why, why is all of this like plastic here? And why is this tray shaped the way it is in the front left of the case? Why isn't it just a hole there? 
Why are the lines at this angle? Because I'm always looking for what's the functional angle. There's got to be a reason for this. And he gave an answer long and detailed about the convergence of designs and trying to create a, a flow from one corner into the other and all of this design language. And I said, is it because it looks cool? The answer is yes. It's because it, it looks cool and that's why they did it. So not a lot of function to some of the sweeping angles you see. The plastic inside of the panel is a little functional because it helps stiffen it up. But beyond that, I mean, it's really just for looks. That's fine if that's what you want to buy. Uh, certainly it's something that we said that height did well in the Y60. It's not what we look for in a case review, but it's not a bad thing as long as they cover the functional aspects. Interestingly here, just from a design ethos standpoint, uh, so Rob Teller, who worked on the Y40 and also this Y60, he doesn't like the idea of design by committee. You know, honestly, a lot of the companies don't know if the thing is good. Like there's a lot of this arbitrary, well, we, we designed it like this. Yeah. And here I try to resolve things. I had a conversation with him about how a lot of case companies right now, it feels like they're trying to shove everything possible into the case. It inflates the price. It becomes kind of bloated and unattainable by a lot of people for features that largely aren't necessary for the vast majority of potential buyers. And so the question is, why does that happen? And he thinks it's uh, designed by a committee approach where everybody tries to pitch in little pieces of the case to try and appeal to as many people as possible while accidentally entirely losing the appeal to anyone under, say, $180, which is a large part of the market. So you end up in this problem of trying to please every buyer. It's just, it's kind of a fool's errand, especially if you're a smaller case company and you need to focus on a specific niche or uh, segment of the market. So he's kind of against that design by committee approach and uh, prefers to have sort of one key focus for the product that the whole team can then execute on that focus rather than being sort of disjointed. It's an interesting philosophical discussion of design, one we won't go into further here today, but uh, kind of fun to have those conversations about, well, why, why do you design it this way? That's why. Internally, the case includes a similar riser cable to before with the plastic casing color match to the chassis. The floor of the case has cable cutouts, some ventilation on the bottom front edge and alongside the glass, and a hole partly below the GPU fin stack that would allow some air exhaust if the fins are oriented top to bottom on your GPU. We actually think height should pull that hole forward closer to the glass or widen it so that it better lines up cleanly under the GPU fin stack rather than towards the back and biased behind the cart. This would allow more air to get away from the video card faster or using the fan in the bottom of the case underneath the shroud would allow more air to be piped in straight to the cooler. One of our other small complaints about the Y40 was the use of a single three pole, three and a half millimeter header instead of two three and a half mil headers. And the company noted that it will likely explore the two 3.5 millimeter jacks in the future instead, which would be better for most headsets sold for desktops. Otherwise, the front IO is simple. It runs two USB 3 headers and one Type-C. We're about to get into the coolers here, but the new cases will ship in black, red, like this one, and a whiter white than the Y60. Uh, so we did see them side by side. It's basically just they're going for a more pure white color for it. And we should be able to begin the review process in January from what we understand. Now, the main angle here for the case is basically to do this again, except at a lower price point and uh, with slightly smaller sizing for the chassis. So they're coming down from 60 liters on the Y60 to about 48 on the Y40. Uh, four dimensions, of course, not a zero at the end of that. And uh, that's really going to be it. That's the main selling point. We'll look at it once it's out. Um, Height is a very interesting company to profile, but of course, keep in mind that the actual product execution is different from the interesting story behind the people and their goals there. So we will isolate those as always and review it as any other case in a couple of weeks, it sounds like. Uh, the Thick Q60 is next. This one I'm personally really interested in from a testing standpoint. It is the fattest liquid cooler uh, we've ever seen, I think. So Height has a new all-in-one liquid cooler. Arctic has been wildly successful with its liquid freezer series. And Lee and Lee with the Galahad 2 that we just showed in our Lee and Lee video at their offices they're also moving towards a larger cooler where everybody's thickening up the radiators. It is more effective. Uh, it impacts the case performance or the case fitment rather for those. But because so many companies are now moving this direction, probably there will be accommodation and case design to fit the larger radiators. So for the basics here, the Thick Q60 uh, is basically designed for, the, for heights cases. 
because it's massive. For perspective, Lian Li is adding about six to eight millimeters of thickness. Height has gone completely insane. This prototype of the Q60, it's thick AF. The radiator is 52 millimeters thick. Normally radiators are in the 20 to 32 mil range, and sometimes you get a 38, but 52 is crazy. It mounts two 120 millimeter fans, so it's a 240. The fans are also fat though. They're 32 millimeters thick versus the normal 25. That becomes necessary because it'd otherwise be difficult to generate the static pressure required to push through a 52 millimeter radiator otherwise. So the total cooler thickness is 84 millimeters. It's like 3.3 uh, inches or so just for the fan and for the radiator. That will obviously never fit in the top of most cases, including this one, uh, but it will fit in the side of something like a Y60 or Y40. You can get away with it in the front of a lot of cases as long as you're running 120s, but you really do have to use 120s for this. It'd be difficult to go to 140 uh, because the static pressure starts to become a challenge. You can't push the air hard enough to get all the way through the fins and still carry all that heat out with it. So that's the design challenge. It's an extreme version, uh, almost a brute force approach to what has worked well for Arctic here. Clearly this will have compatibility issues, but uh, it goes back to working with the IY Power as well, where worst case, they can always sell it back into the company. The Q60 won't come out until around middle of 2023. So this prototype is only partially representative. They strapped two radiators together and they 3D printed some components, including parts of the fan and the pump block, which we can't show uncensored right now. But the concept is all there and early thermal testing has begun. Now it's also going to be extremely expensive. We don't have a final price from height yet. Uh, we have a range that they think they're going to land in. I'm not going to bother sharing it because it might it's, there's a high probability it changes. What we can say confidently is it will become the most expensive all-in-one we've ever reviewed, including the ones that are mostly expensive for their RGB. So be prepared for that. I mean, it's uh, I am suspicious of whether there will be true value and cost performance, but it may be one of the best performers regardless. So that would be kind of cool to see. We're looking forward to testing it. Uh, they think that they're going to kill the performance, their word, of most 360s on the market, and that's with a 240. And they think they'll be competitive with the Arctic one, other than fitting in cases, obviously. But that's really the main caveat here. This also complicates thermal testing for the cases because the case's stock thermal performance will be one aspect. But the fact that other cases won't be able to fit the cooler makes it unique as a test scenario where uh, it's going to be hard to account for that otherwise. Interestingly, this will be a dual pump cooler. Both pumps will be in the radiator, similar to the one shown here, except it'll have two. The cooler is OEM'd by Apple Tech. That's uh, A-P-A-L-T-E-K. They're one of the few AIO solutions engineers on the market with height heavily customizing. The dual pump solution helps keep head pressure through the cold plates micro fins since the pump isn't situated on top of the block. Height will also mount its fan and RGB controller in a modular component on the end of the radiator. Height says it has observed in competitors that the number one complaint from consumers seems to be cable management, which we agree with. And so it wants to connect everything modularly at the radiator, but with a PCB that can be actually swapped out in the future for new designs. This allows some level of reuse of the metal components if upgrading just the RGB or the fan components, so that's good. So it'll support up to six fans, that's two to four for the cooler and then some for the case. And then for LEDs on the cooler, the plan is to use short cable runs or 90 degree connectors point to point in daisy chain fashion, similar to what you see from everyone else on the market. We don't have a lot of detail for these, but Height is also trying to customize the fans and do some engineering there. Um, they have 3D printed versions, but nothing we can talk much about yet other than the materials. So although these fans are clearly non-functional, the end goal is to ship them with uh, pre-installed as push fans, most likely, with LCP blades. This is similar to Noctua's blade construction, where stronger plastics in the blades is important. It allows the blades to extend closer to the inner diameter of the fan housing without clipping that housing when spinning. The fan floats slightly on the shaft, and as the plastics age, lower end fans will grind against the inner diameter if engineered improperly. 
We've only ever seen this on Enermax and bottom of the barrel case fans. Well, that's because most fans use shorter blades to avoid the problem, but it's best to use a blade as long as possible and better plastics instead. As for the 3D printed screen that we've been blurring out, we have been able to show the prototyped one. That was what was on the table, showing a looping GIF of me giving the middle finger to Nvidia and other fun GIFs. Uh, but that thing is gonna be a five and a half inch screen. So the screen in that prototype is accurate. They're gonna put that on top of a cooler. Uh, it's it's going to be very expensive. Uh, you're going to be paying for looks big time on that thing. So they're going to put a five and a half inch LCD on the cooler. They're putting a lot of downcast LEDs that will illuminate the board. They're individually per pixel addressable, and uh, they are going to be calling it QRGB. Uh, it's basically just ARGB. We asked what the Q stands for, and it doesn't stand for anything. It's just not A, and no one else is calling it QRGB, so it's called QRGB now. We're gonna go with quadressible. So these are quadressible RGB LEDs, and you'll have to wait a little longer to actually see details on it. We did film some of the software though, for the OS at least. Okay, so Height's trying to make the best performing AIO on the market. This is basically just, it's a, a news recap like we did for Lee and Lee, just we're filming it from home. Um, I think their goals are interesting. I'd like to profile the company some more and interview some more people who work there, talk to the designers. They really only have one meaningful product right now and it's the Y60. So next year is gonna be kind of the, it's, it's like when a new band emerges and has a hit album, the question is, okay, can you repeat that performance? So that's what we're looking for in 2023 from a height. Is, uh, is it a one hit wonder with this? Or does the Y40 and does the thick Q60, does that really land and make an impact in the industry? And uh, that's where we'll leave this one. So we'll be back with the impartial review as always and talk about the performance of the Y4D and of the thick Q60 middle of the year when that one's available. The Y40 is much sooner. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. And we'll see you all next time.